So I guess just let's get, uh, let's get started. Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk about podcasting. Um, by a show of hands, who in here listens to podcasts? Okay. Who here is a podcaster or has its own podcast? Okay, Wimpy, yeah. <laughs> there as well, great. Um, who has no idea what a podcast is and just thought this talk would be more interesting than the one about MySQL containers or Ubuntu phone? No one, that's great, okay. Um, then let's kick, off, let's kick things off with the basics. What even is a podcast? Um, according to Wikipedia, a podcast is an episodic series of digital audio or video files which a user can, listen, uh, can download in order to listen. Alternatively, the word podcast may refer to the individual component of such a series or to an individual media file. So, with that out of the way, um, how does one record a podcast? Um, there are many different ways. If your podcast format is just you talking into a mic all alone with other co-hosts, you can just use Audacity, um, like you would for the other audio application on Linux. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You just connect your mic and press record. Um, but if you or you uh, have a show with a co-host um, and you can't be at the same place at the same time, um, you can also record remotely. You can use applications like TeamSpeak or Mumble, uh, which are available for, for, uh, on Linux, um, which have a built-in recording functionality. And um, TeamSpeak even has multi-track recording, so if you talk over each other, you can later sort it out in the edit. Um, right. Um, hello. <laughs> So let's keep talking about editing. Um, there are many professional tools available on Linux for editing audio. Um, much of the, uh, many of them are, have, <coughs> they're late for my talk. Um, many of these applications have way too many features that you all don't need for podcasting. But just for the basics, um, let me present you the obvious choice, which we also talked about before, Audacity. It gets far too less credit, in my opinion, for what it can do. It, it's packed with a ton of features, and um, but you only really need a few to edit your podcast. Um, you can use Audacity uh, to do the cuts uh, at the intro, the outro theme, if you have one. Um, you can do some basic equalizing or compression. Um, but if you don't know anything about EQ or compression and you have no idea about how audio actually works, um, you should use the next tool, which is Levelator. Levelator is a tool which was uh, got developed in 2012 um, by the team from the Conversations Network, which helps you with um, making the audio just sound clean without doing man uh, much manually. Um, it has a built-in compressor, normalizer, limiter, so there are already three things you don't have to worry about or to even know what they are. Um, but in theory, they just make your audio sound better. Um, uh, it's that simple, there are no settings. Um, you just drag the audio file into it and it spits out a better version of that file from uh, in the same folder than the source file came from. Um, it runs on Ubuntu, it runs on Mac, it runs on Windows. Uh, let's scratch Mac, I just updated to Catalina this weekend and it's no longer working, I have to figure that out later. Um, I can highly recommend it. We use it for some of our shows, not all of them, but um, yeah, most of them actually. And it's really easy to use, and um, you have to do next to nothing after you used it um, to get great audio. Um, another part of uh, another important part of editing is chapter markers, which I would think some podcasters would do more. Some even in this room, um, the uh, it, re it makes it really easy to find. It makes it really easy to find a certain topic um, that you want to listen to. Or if you are not interested in it, you can just use it to skip to the next topic that you might be interested in. Um, it also improves your SEO, your search engine optimization, and it makes it easier for new listeners to discover your podcast. Um, you remember Audacity from before? Um, you can use it to edit chapter markers, actually, um, during the editing of your audio. And unfortunately, it can't export them into the same audio file, but you can export it separately as a text file. You can then import that the text file into another application called Podcast Chapters. Um, Podcast Chapters, unfortunately, is only available on the Mac at the moment, but there are equivalents for Windows and Linux. So there are alternatives on in Linux. I know for a fact like there are two command line applications which you can use to add chapter markers. Um, the app Podcast Chapters is interesting because it does way more things than just adding chapters. Um, you can set the cover artwork. Yeah, you can set the cover artwork. You can uh, do some basic MP3 text, and you can then export out, uh, all of that together in the same file. So after you've done the editing, the, 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 the artwork, the, the edited the chapters, and you just export it to the one file, and you're basically done. That's the file that you can then use to upload to wherever you want. Um, Right, and that brings us to how to publish a podcast, actually. Um, 
in order to publish an episode, you need um, three different tools. They are kind of interchangeable. Um, for starters, you need a WordPress blog, uh, the Podlove Publisher plugin, and iTunes. All of these three tools are interchangeable. You can use other tools if you'd like to, um, but these are my recommendations. Um, let's start with Podlove. Yeah, you can kind of tell. Um, Podlove is the plugin that takes care of the publishing part uh, of the actual episode by creating an RSS feed um, and get us some basic analytics. As you can see, you get an overview with the download numbers. Um, you get the last top 10 episodes, uh, what podcast clients are being used by your listeners, what operating system they're on, and uh, what else. If they're listening on your website or if they're using an app, which is really valuable information because as you can tell, I shouldn't really bother doing the web player episodes anymore because they're just using the app anyway. Um, next, all oh, right. Um, you can also get an idea of how an episode is performing compared to others um, over the amount of time that you can set. Um, overall, it's a really, really useful plugin which uh, does all the things, I guess. Um, right. But in order to get some stats for your episodes or for your podcast at all, you first have to set up a show in your WordPress blog using Podlove. Um, you just have to set a basic title, um, the URL, shortcut, uh, short description, and the cover artwork, and that's basically all you need in order to get started. You can add information later on if you want to. Um, next, if you uh, want to add an episode, you just uh, do... Is that showing? Yes. Um, you just choose uh, create a new episode, and um, you would add all the... Uh, show notes that you want to appear during uh, in the podcast app or on the website for that specific episode. And um, if you publish that, Podlove creates an RSS feed with the episode in it. Um, head over to the Podlove settings. There you um, see the URL of the, uh, of, the, of the new podcast that you've just created with the new episode in it. You can say it only says one because that was this or test thing that we use for presentation. Um, you need to submit that URL to iTunes, and I will get to the why part in a moment. Um, you have basically got just head over to iTunes, log in, or create an Apple ID, and then you can submit your own podcast. Um, Apple is doing manual reviews on each of the shows, uh, on each new show, so it can take up to like three days, I think, until it gets approved. So that they're just making sure that you're not uploading any copyright material or just something that sounds shit, basically. Um, you only have to do this once. New episodes will automatically appear from there on in your SS feed. Um, and to tackle the question why you should even care about iTunes, um, it's from Apple, this is a Linux event, so why am I even bringing it up? Um, iTunes provides the most widely used podcast directory, which is um, widely used by almost every podcast client app. So if you want people to discover your show, you should really submit the feed to iTunes. Um, people who dislike Apple or don't just, don't, just don't want uh, to use iTunes, they can still use the manual RSS feed link from your website. It's still fine. There's no downside to it. And I think that was the last slide for that. Right. Um, this was originally planned as a 20-minute segment. And we have five more minutes left for questions if you want to. There we go. <laughs> Wimpy. It's, it's, I had to search it for a long time. It, there was originally a post on the Audacity forum from 2008, um, which talked about creating such a thing. And uh, they renamed it a few times. And then, I, uh, thanks to the web archive, I found the original page, which no longer exists. But you can still get the binary. It's no longer maintained, but it still does the same thing that it did on day one. So. Um, yes, let's work on that. <laughs> yeah. um, I've never heard of Podlove. Have you used Yes, I've used Podcast. Sure, no worries. Um, um, I, I'm gladly going to help you switch to Podlove. Um, it's created by a, a popular German podcaster called Tim Pritlove. Um, or he, he started a project and it evolved to many more people working on it. It's open source. Um, it has many more features, like including the chapter markers, which you have to pay for on, uh, on, on the other thing, I think. Yeah. Um, it has many, many features in there because, uh, said Tim Pritlove is really, really specific in what he wants and he ended up with writing it himself or getting the idea, uh, getting everything in that he wants and there are many useful stuff that I use as well. <laughs> sure. 
Sure. Uh, maybe I should mention Potluff is also working on a standalone application, so you don't have to use it bundled in WordPress if you don't want to. There's, they're working on that. I know you would find that interesting. Yes, um, I don't know about the progress so far, but they've been talking about it for over a year, and there's a beta which has it, I think. So yeah, that's definitely on the list. So when are you adding podcast chapters for Ubuntu Podcast? Sure. Or possibly never. Okay. Yeah, I had I had this kind of sentiment in my head before. Um, I, it's like a really selfish idea that you want people to listen to the whole thing because you created it and therefore people should listen to the whole thing. Um, after over 100 episodes, we kind of uh, forgot about that because people were still asking for it because they didn't really want to skip them. But what Potluff also does with its web player, you can share or you can link to specific chapters if you want to re-listen stuff. So that makes it really useful. So, yes. Yes. And we have a, a very high percentage of people that listen all the way through. And we're not in a hurry to kind of disrupt that. So I can I can get behind that, yeah. <coughs> all right. Any other questions? Then thank you very much for your time. I hope you learned something today. And let's get some lunch. <laughs>